Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com and today I'm going to be going through a hand from a World Poker Tour event that illustrates quite a few concepts that you need to understand if you are going to succeed at poker tournaments. So, we are playing on the very last hand of day one. Half the people at the table are already getting their, their chip bags out, they're ready to go, and then a tight aggressive player from under the gun plus one raises to 4.3 big blinds before the flop. Right off the bat, alarm bells should be going off. This is a scenario where under the gun plus one almost certainly just has a strong hand unless he somehow has it in his mind that this is a great bluff spot. And you know, some people will think this is a great bluff spot and they'll bluff with all sorts of stuff. But I didn't get that vibe from this player. I thought he had something pretty great. So if he has something pretty great, do I want to three bet my pocket queens and get it all in for 60 big blinds? And I think the answer is definitely no. One nice thing about facing a four big blind raise is that if I call, we're probably just gonna see the flop heads up, right? Because everybody else realizes this is kind of abnormal. They don't need to be insane. They just need to get out of the way, put their chips in the bag and move on to day two. So this is a pretty great spot to just call. Um, if I knew my opponent was, let's say, a maniac, I could obviously three bet and then happily get it in. I'm not concerned about making day two. I want to make that very clear. A lot of people think that there's value in making day two, but if anything, if you are trying to maximize your time, you'd rather bust out on this hand and then go home, <laughs> right? You don't have to stay overnight. Obviously, I can't bust out on this hand, though, because I have more chips than my opponent. So anyway, what I want to say is there's no actual value in making day two unless you associate some sort of like happiness EV with it, right? Like, do you get happy when you make day two? Well, then maybe there's some merit in it. But I do not care if I make day two because it doesn't matter. Making day two does not get you in the money. It doesn't get you anything. All it gets you is uh, you have to stay overnight one more day and then come back. I'd rather go home and see my family or do work or anything else quite often. But I get the idea that other people want to stick around and play poker. Just realize that is not what makes you money. I mean, I'll see some people just fold the queens here and say, ah, I'll wait till tomorrow. And that is a big mistake. If you do that, you are making it difficult for you to actually succeed at poker. Because when you have profitable spots, you need to play them. So anyway, 3,500 raise. I'm going to definitely play this hand. The question is, do I call or re-raise? And I'm just going to call, I think. It's okay to call. A lot of people think, and think that they have to re-raise their best hands every time. And I think that's a pretty big mistake. You do not have to do that. Flop comes jack, jack, two. And under the gun, plus one checks. So now... I generally like my hand, but if I bet, I think some people will just rip it in on me. And I don't want to get shoved on. I would rather just check and then induce bluffs from hands like maybe ace-10 or ace-king or king-queen that my opponent maybe raises pre-flop and then decides to give up, but we'll take a stab if I check behind on the flop. So in this scenario, I think we have a pretty clear pot control hand where we are going to check it back and then call most turn and river bets. Also, remember playing this hand, I could look at my opponent, and I thought he actually liked the flop. So if the opponent likes the flop, what does that mean? Well, maybe he just has a jack. <laughs> if he has a jack, clearly I don't want to put money in the pot. And I don't need to bet to find out where I stand, because I already know, even if I um, did not have any read on my opponent, I was still just going to check behind. So either way, I'm checking behind. I don't want to put money in the pot just to get raised. That doesn't make any sense, right? Don't put money in for literally no reason. If I am going to bet here, by the way, if I want to bet with a lot of hands in this scenario, which very easily could be the right strategy because I probably have more jacks than my opponent does in general, I would probably use a small bet size of about 3,500 because if you have a lot of jacks, you don't really care if your opponent sticks around. And if he has unpaired cards, he's probably going to fold to any bet or he'll call one bet and then fold to a turn bet. So if I am going to bet a small bet is ideal. Turns a king, the opponent checks again. Now there's just no purpose in betting. If the opponent does have ace-king, king-queen, he could very easily check, recognizing that I could have some jacks. He doesn't want to get all of his money in with um, one top pair type hand. So this is definitely a spot now where I should just check it back with a very clear marginal made hand. Whenever you have a hand that you cannot really bet and get called by a whole lot of worse hands, that's usually a situation where you want to be checking. So many people think, I have the best hand right now, so I'm going to bet. And, you know, I could have the best hand right now, but if I bet and get called or raised, I probably don't. And I'd rather not put money in the pot. Realize you don't have to just put money in the pot because you think you have the best hand because quite often you just won't. So anyway, I check. River is a queen. 
That's lucky. And now the opponent bets 6,000 into the 9,000 pot. Hmm. So do we raise? Well, I think we can. We realistically only lose here to kings. Notice if our opponent had... I guess we could lose to jacks too, but there's, that's only four combinations of hands, right? The opponent could very easily have a hand like aces, which may call a raise. He could easily have ace-king, which may call a raise. He could have king-jack or queen-jack or ace-jack or jack-10 or maybe jack-9 suited that would call a raise. I know I discounted some of those preflop because of his big preflop raise size, but recognize you don't know your opponent's preflop strategy even if you sat there with him all day. Every once in a while, I'll have someone send me an email saying, I had this great, I played this hand and I decided to make a big fold or a big call on the river because I knew what my opponent was doing. And then I always inquire, how long have you played with this player? And they're like, oh, two hours. Like, you don't know what your opponent's doing, especially in weird spots like abnormal hands on the river. So don't be egotistical and think you actually definitively know what's going on because you don't. I don't, right? The opponent could very easily have a hand like Jack-9 suited preflop. I could just be wrong, right? I thought he had a strong range preflop, but hey, maybe, maybe he's really loose. I don't know. So anyway, given I only lose to four combinations of hands, kings and pocket jacks, I think I have a pretty clear value raise. And realize I'm not raising because I think I have the best hand. I'm raising because I think my opponent can call with many hands that I beat, like aces, ace-king, ace-jack, queen-jack, king-jack, jack-10, jack-9 suited, etc. So there's a whole lot of hands that can that can call my raise that I beat, and there are only a few combinations that I lose to. So pretty easy value raise. Now, how much will those hands call? Well, given us the last hand of the day, this guy and it goes back to psychology that does not make logical sense. A lot of people do not want to go broke on the last hand of the day. They refuse to go broke on the last hand of the day. So I don't think an all-in makes sense here. In a normal scenario, I actually don't hate a big shove. I think it certainly is viable. But in this scenario, especially given it's the end of the day, I think we want to go for a 20,000 raise. I think a 20,000 or 25,000 raise is going to get called by most of that range I just listed out. Maybe aces folds, maybe ace king folds, but the jacks are all going to call. And you may say, there's no way the opponent has a jack. He would just bet the flop in the turn with it. Again, I don't know. Stop thinking you know what they do. <laughs> Instead, Structure your ranges to be difficult to play against, play fundamentally sound, and then adjust here and there as you think it makes logical sense. And here, I just don't know what the opponent's doing. So anyway, I think the raise to about twenty or 20,000 is quite nice. Um, if we do jam all in, for all I know, maybe the opponent folds out a hand like Jack-10, which would clearly be a disaster. So I raised to 20,000. My opponent instantly called, so I'm clearly good. And he has Ace-Jack, so all of those out there said there's no way he could have a jack because he'd bet it on the flop in the turn. Clearly we're wrong because that's what he had. And, um, you know, I don't know if he would have called a an all-in raise. He might would have called a bigger raise, like 25k. I was actually trying to target more so hands like aces and ace-king with my river raise or just like poorly played ace-queen type hands. But um, this time we raised the river and got called and we made day two of the tournament with a very half hefty 90,000 chip stack, which is a solid double up plus sum on day one. So, very solid, productive day one, despite getting a little bit short early. And that's great. Whenever you are playing a tournament, don't get discouraged if you start the day and it goes poorly. Sometimes that's going to happen. Don't think in your head, this is a rebuy tournament. I can just blast it off. Who cares? That's not how poker works. If you constantly spew off your stack every single time you get a little bit short, if you start with 40000 and you get down to 32000 don't think, oh, no, I'm short. I need to get it all in or rebuy. That will cost you a lot of money in the long run. Just sit there and continue playing good, fundamentally sound poker. I cannot hammer this home enough. I discuss this thoroughly at my training site, PokerCoaching.com, where I teach you how to play fundamentally sound poker and then how to adjust to take advantage of what your opponents are doing wrong. Obviously, I teach how to know when they are actually doing something wrong as opposed to just you thinking they do something wrong. And understanding that will go a long way to helping you become a successful poker player long term. So... Go to PokerCoaching.com and get your completely free trial membership. That's going to be it for today. Hope you enjoyed this hand for PokerNews.com. Thanks to them for letting me make them. If you enjoy these quizzes or these hands, tell them on Twitter, at PokerNews. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you later.